do you do? Um, so that'll answer those questions. And then we can get, we can, I'll probably rant a little bit and then we'll turn it over to questions for you guys, but really encourage you to ask them, uh, be thinking about them where, where you are in your business. What are you struggling with? Uh, are you like, I want to start selling my art. I've never sold anything before. Did you have a healthy business before the pandemic? Uh, are you just offering originals? You're trying to figure out how to offer commissions. Do you have pricing issues? Uh, are you contemplating Facebook ads? Have you been boosting posts on Facebook and Instagram? Please stop doing that immediately. You're lighting your money on fire. I'll explain why. Uh, we can get into just about anything, but I'd love to love to hear from you guys, your questions of what you're struggling with, uh, what you think is preventing you from taking the next step. And then, you know, obviously you can ask anything about what we do, pricing, websites, marketing, this, that, and the other. Um, so during the course of this little video, the chat will be open. Um, the chat is like at the bottom of your little Zoom bar. If you're not familiar with Zoom, there's like a little chat icon and you can throw questions in there and I can deal with those as we roll along. Uh, otherwise I can deal with them in the Q and A and yeah, I'll see you guys just in, just in a second on the other side of the video. Uh, go ahead, April. This is the homepage I'm talking about that we just like recently redid. And I think it does a really good job articulating sort of who we are, what we do at a very high level. And if you scroll down the page, there's a bunch of videos of me explaining, um, a whole bunch, a whole bunch of things, everything that we do from top to bottom. But our tagline, which states everything that you need to start, run, and grow a successful art business, uh, really does sum up what we do. You know, we we get pigeonholed as they're a website company. They're a website company, and yes, we do offer websites, but it is a tiny, tiny portion of what we do. Ultimately, we learned a couple of years ago uh, the hard way. By the way, if we are going to grow and be successful as a business, art storefronts that is one hundred percent dependent. Surprise, this one, but on how successful our customers are, on how much art and photography our customers are selling on a yearly basis. And so when you look at that as the problem that we're solving, it becomes so much more than a website because a website is not enough. But still, we're gonna talk about the website. I'm gonna get into the other layers as we go down. So it does indeed all start with the website. I will pull one up because it'll make it more interactive. And, you know, Anyone that's been trying, attempting to sell art or photography for any period of time, I'll use Bono today, they know one thing conclusively, selling art in an e-commerce capacity digitally online is not like selling other items. It's not like selling swim fins or ladies' handbags or um, electric scooters or bicycles or anything else, right? Buying art, okay, and buying art online is A, an extremely visual process, and B, an extremely friction Build process. And what do I mean by friction? I mean, friction is all of the various different things, okay, that will prevent a visitor to your website from turning into a buyer, okay? And so, really, everything that we do with our software is attempt to solve for this friction, okay? To solve for the friction, to solve for how important the visual aspects are towards selling art and photography online. And, you know, it's never any one feature. It's all of the features working together. It can be little things like when you select a media type, which is canvas, it changes to a canvas, a gallery wrapped canvas. Most people don't even know what a canvas is. And so we've developed special videos that show the differences, the nuances in the real world, what an actual canvas print looks like, what's going to show up at their house, uh, uh, what are the high points of this one, how are is canvas different than metal? Oops, I missed a click on that. And so you can see what a metal print looks like and how it's sitting flat, eventually how it's hanging up, all the nuances, the intricacies, because it is such a visual process buying art. We have a feature called the wall preview, uh, which allows you to cycle through various different room types. Again, such a visual process buying art. Not only can you circle through the different room types, and yes, you can add your own room type images in. We use some generic ones by design, and you can size pieces up and down see what it's going to look like do i need a 36 by 49 is that too big do i instead want a 28 by 38 we're making it easier for your potential customer to get to a buying decision what if they want to their wall their walls aren't white right what if they're this ugly color or there's something a little bit darker is the piece going to look good with this color right because again buying art is just such an incredibly visual process um you know another feature that that everybody likes to talk about that we get a lot of plaudits for is we Here have this, we are we have this feature, and excuse me, mute that, called Live Preview with AR, okay? And what this is, is this allows somebody to come to your website with their telephone, can be iPhone or Android, you can see the phones here on the right-hand side, 
and without downloading any apps, uh, they can just use their phone, their camera, and press one button on your website that says Live Preview. And what this is going to do, it's going to take the camera on their phone, okay, which is gonna show the real room, the real wall, where the art will potentially go, and then it takes your piece in augmented reality and it projects it onto the wall. And you're able to move it around with your finger, you're able to size it up, size it down, take screenshots. And so is it gonna look great in the room? What size do I need to get, right? And so again, this is attempting to solve for the visual friction of, I don't know if it's gonna work in my room. I don't know what it's gonna look like, right? It's just getting them one step closer to a buying decision, removing the friction from the process. And, you know, I've been doing e-commerce marketing, digital marketing my entire life. Everyone loves to gravitate towards the wall preview or the live preview with AR. But the reality is when you do this for any period of time, it's not about one individual feature. It's about all the features working in conjunction and you never know which one's gonna end up, you know, if we think of a sports analogy, like a basketball team, it's how many players you have on the court that can contribute, right, to eventually scoring that basket. And so it's why we do the demo process. We have literally hundreds and hundreds of features all to remove the friction, all to help you get better at selling art and photography online. And when you when you request one of these things, uh, our outreach team will reach out, have a conversation with you and schedule it. It goes like an hour and 10 minutes and we just go through feature after feature after feature. So it's not about any one of them, it's about all of them working in conjunction. Um, independent of that, let's keep working down the page. So we also have a ton of backend software. It turns out running an art business, art photography business, there's a ton of individual little nuance and things that, that can slow you down, okay? Things like uploading an image and how many images do you have to upload to your web page for all the various different media sizes and types you have. It's very helpful to be able to just upload one, have all the sizes auto-populate for you and tell you exactly what you can sell. Uh, things like markups, how do you set markups? Can you do it globally? Can you do it per media type, right? And so no one likes to talk about the back end features, but we have a slew of those as well, all uh, there to make your life easier, to give you time back, okay? Um, let's talk about our fulfillment. And I, we love talking about this. This is in our, our company DNA pretty significantly, but I'll pull up a website. So we're on Bill Stidham's site. Um, or I should probably start here actually. So we are integrated, well, let me start here. You can have it any which way you like. If you're an artist that just does originals and you get orders, obviously you're gonna be responsible for fulfilling the originals because you have them. Uh, if you're an artist that has a local printer or a photographer that has a local printer, you really like using your printer, you can use your printer. The orders come in, you send the order to your printer, we call that self-fulfillment, no problem. What we recommend our customers do though is integrate with one of our print partners and I'll get into the reasons why, but we've got graphic dimensions on the East Coast, we've got Bay Photo on the West Coast, we've got Print Partner for our customers in Canada, and then we just recently integrated with a company called Guten that handles the merchandise, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, how does it work? You sign up, you get your, uh, your site set up, which usually takes 14 days or less, you click a button that says, I wanna integrate with this print partner, an order comes into the website, the printer gets paid, you get paid, the order gets printed, the order gets boxed, your logo goes on the side of the box, boom, it ships to the customer, you touch absolutely nothing. There's nothing you have to touch, nothing you have to do, all happens automatically. And again, it's to give you back that amount of time. And, you know, no one has time in today's day and age to be dealing with the admin, okay? Any time that you spend on the admin, by which I mean sending the order to your local printer, uh, uh, checking on the proof, uh, uh, sending tracking numbers, did it ship, any of that correspondence, all of that, if you're spending your time on that, is time you are not spending on your biggest problem, which is your marketing. So we really believe like streamlining sort of this drop shipping, print on demand, automated fulfillment is a very, very wise decision if you wanna create successful artists and photographers. Now just recently, um, this was probably what, like a month before Christmas maybe, we integrated with a company called Guten and what it allows our customers to do is sell merchandise of a myriad of different kinds. You know, uh, hoodies, uh, iPhone cases, tank tops, um, you know, they can come in, adjust the image exactly how they want to see it. Maybe they want to tilt it depending on what case it is and get iPhone cases and, you know, a number of different other items. Um, we've got throw pillows and, uh, I clicked out of it, and coffee mugs. <laughs> and we're adding more and more and more and more of these. And on the subject of merch, we realize, again, if you go back to our original mission, why we exist, 
you know, we want we need to create a set of circumstances, a set of conditions such that the artist, the photographer can make and grow as successful a business as they want. And so some artists look at this merch and they're like, they turn their noses up at it and like, that's not fine art. Why would I ever want to do that? Some are like, I'm all in, I love it. We don't care. Our job is to provide as many different opportunities for artists and photographers to be successful as possible. And we've been totally blown away by how much of this stuff actually, believe it or not, sells. Um, and some of it is higher margin than you would think. Like a throw pillow is $44. And what does a tote bag cost? I think a tote bag costs $38. So sell it or not, you have every opportunity imaginable available to you. If you want to have it all in kind of like Bill does here on his site where, you know, you have your fine art uh, uh, media types across the top and then you have the merch all in one product page, great. If you want to have individual items in the store, you want to have your artwork fine and then you just want to have a line of phone cases. Uh, if you want to have one for a couple of weeks and then turn it off, you can do any and all of that and it's one click to turn it on at any point in time. It's automated. It's completely automated in terms of fulfillment and, and that's not going to change. And we realize again, like artists and photographers are essentially just creators, right? You're just creators and you have a talent. You have a talent with a brush or you have a talent with the lens. You want to monetize that talent. Okay. So again, our job is to give you as many different opportunities to be able to monetize that talent as possible. So that's how we, that's how we go about it. And, you know, again, it's a debate about when to use it or when not, but somebody on one of these um, sessions earlier was like, you know, who's the greatest rock band of all time. I was like, no, who? He's like, the Rolling Stones. He goes, guess what the Rolling Stones have at their concerts? I said, what? A giant booth for merch. He's like, they sell hundreds of thousands of dollars of it a year. If the Stones sell it, I'll sell it. So anyway, I thought that, that kind of stuck with me. It was fun. So that's our, our print fulfillment. Um, and, and I should say, too, that we're adding calendars and we're adding puzzles and we are adding photo books. And to be honest with you, if they come out with a line of hot air balloons, we'll add hot air balloons, too. Right, because again, it's creating a set of circumstances such that the artist and photographer can be successful. We don't care where the success comes from. I don't care if Brian gets into business and he's the, the number one iPhone selling case guy of the entire United States. He's got a successful business, right? So not for us to decide. Um, support, we believe we have best in class support. If you took a look at our Facebook ads and you scrolled through the 350 of them, you'll see more positive responses for the support than just about anything else. We're very, very good at this. Yes, it's in all the venues you think it is, email, phone, chat support. But in addition to that, kind of what I'm most proud about is we run six days a week, including Saturdays, Zoom sessions, just like the one you're on right now, okay? And you can pop into one at any point in time with any support-related issue and get fixed, get unstuck. There's screen shares. They can take over control of your computer and just get you sorted, uh, get you sorted instantaneously. So we're very, very good at it. Not only do we support our application, we ask, we, we, we ask you guys, we teach you guys marketing all year long, which I'll get into in a second. What if you're having a problem with Facebook or with Instagram or with MailChimp or with your Facebook ads? We actually support that too. You can pop into a Zoom session and say, hey, Patrick, I'm stuck on my Facebook ads. I'm getting this message. Can you help me? And our team will get you unstuck. That's an amazing thing. There's not many companies that do that. So I'm very, very proud about that. Um, that's in terms of the overall website picture. And we essentially do all of that okay to give you your time back such that you can work on the biggest problem that every single solitary person on this zoom call has which is the marketing problem you need to get better at it and let me tell you i've got 4700 customers and there's only one universal truth about every one of them right every niche imaginable every subject matter all over this country and others every one of them has a marketing problem the person that just past $500,000 a year in sales has a marketing problem. They want to grow that business, they have a marketing problem. The person that just is getting started, sold their first piece, they have a marketing problem and everybody in between, right? It is the biggest problem. And so, you know, we want to create successful customers. We realize we need to teach artists and photographers how to market. And so how did we solve for that particular problem? We created collectively what might as well be called the art business university. That's how we look at it because I'm not sure there's a better term to explain it. One, we have the best digital education that exists in terms of selling art and photography online, full stop. I I'm, I'm, hang my hat on this. We have detailed documentation that we call playbooks on every marketing facet of imaginable. How to run an email campaign, how to run a Black Friday sale, how to go live on Instagram, how to go live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time, how to go live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time with your laptop on a cell phone. Detailed, step-by-step, -step, audio, video, screenshot documentation. 
If we're asking you to send emails, we will give you the email copy. You just adjust it to taste for what you're doing. So the playbooks are incredible. They're very robust and they're very focused on teaching you how to market. We pair that with a 365 day a year marketing calendar, okay? It has on it beginner, intermediate, and advanced. You take on what you can take on. You're never not knowing what you need to be doing on a week in, week out basis. You start doing, you, first, you're overwhelmed. You're like, this is, I've never done this. This is crazy. How am I gonna survive? And then you fight through it. And yet, and you got through the beginner level, and then you take on the intermediate, and then you take on the advanced. The majority of our customers follow this doggone near verbatim year in, year out, because it works, it's effective. Not only does it tell you what to do, but it solves for one of the greatest, the other greatest pandemic of our lifetime, the shiny object syndrome, okay? Not only does the calendar tell you what to do, it tells you what not to do, okay? What not to be spending your time on, right? And how do I know this? One, I'm very good at digital marketing. Two, we have 4,700 customers and I get to see all of their data. I can tell everyone on this call conclusively out of the 4,700 customers that I have, I have not seen anyone turn a positive ROI at marketing on Pinterest. No one is making any money from marketing on Pinterest. So I'm going to tell you, you don't have to worry about Pinterest. I see you laughing, Mary. I do not want you spending any time on Pinterest, period. Waste of time. So too with SEO, okay? So the, the calendar, is equally powerful on what you need to focus on is what you ignore, okay? It's what you ignore, and that's a big deal. Number three of Yard Business University is what we call office hours, okay? We take the entire customer base, we split it into three. Until you sell, sell $2,000 directly on your website, you're in the traction group. Uh, and after you sold $2,000 on your website, you're in the ramping group. After you sold a much higher revenue threshold that we don't publish, you get in the advanced group, which we call growth. We hold week in, week out, every single solitary week, and we took one week off for New Year's, but essentially 48, 49 weeks a year. Uh, Zoom calls like this, you come on on a weekly basis. There are, it's either me or members of my team. We go over the playbooks, we go over the calendars, we talk about wins, uh, how somebody landed an interior decorator and sold $35,000 worth. They're gonna come on and tell their story. Not only are they gonna come on and tell their story, they're gonna say, Here's the email that did it, here's the copy, here's the Facebook post, and you can go and look at that stuff, right? And you're learning in concert with your peers. Digital online education is not enough, okay? If you look at the stats out there, I don't care who it is, Kajabi or Masterclass or lynda.com, 30% of the people that buy those courses actually finish them. So we can't just have digital education. We have to have in-person teaching sessions and everyone knows how to Zoom now, it's our new reality. So those sessions, which we started like, I think two weeks, three weeks ahead of the pandemic had been the single solitary biggest fundamental change to our business we've ever had. If before the pandemic, I had 100 customers and I told those 100 customers via email, guys, Black Friday's coming, you gotta get going on your sale. Here's the playbook, right? And then I recorded a podcast episode and I was like, we're gonna do this. 35 out of the 100 would take action. After these video sessions where I'm able to go through things, people are able to ask their questions, raise their hands, get unstuck, learn your peers, I have 75 people taking action on that sale and it's fundamentally changing the business. It is making our customers more successful, uh, uh, more accountable, actually staying focused. Like, look, you guys are all solopreneurs for the most part. I mean, we could pull this entire group and not a lot of you guys have a big team. You don't have an office behind you where you're yelling at an intern to help you out. You are a solopreneur, okay? You, you know, myself, the CEO, we've been entrepreneurs our entire life. I know it's a roller coaster. I know there's highs and the lows. When you're on those lows, you need to kick in the pants, right? You need to be lifted up sometimes. And that's what these Zoom sessions do too, which is incredible. We follow it up with a Facebook group that is highly curated, okay? Uh, uh, there's no trolls, there's no nonsense in there, right? You've seen some of the other groups out there online and how ridiculous it gets in those things. And artists are sharing with other artists, photographers are sharing with other photographers, the people that are in the landscape niche are talking to others in the landscape niche. Hey guys, what do you think of this new direction? What did you use in terms of pricing? They're publishing their wins. And so sometimes you can't just hear it from us, the official company mouthpiece. And so it's nice to have a whole bunch of people that are doing the same journey at the same time, um, helping each other out, sharing, what are you doing here? What are you doing there? So that collectively is the Art Business University. And it's, it's like a college, it, I mean, it really is. And the difference is you pay your tuition, you come in and there's no graduates because the learning never stops, right? And you know, in addition to that, it, it never will stop. In today's digital marketing landscape, the goalposts are just constantly moving, right? Like so quickly, you feel like you just learned something and it moves over here. So we keep you up to date with all of that. As a final 
about six months ago, or maybe five months ago now, we started an in-house marketing agency. And it's an in-house marketing agency that only does one thing. It helps artists and photographers sell more art online than off. And we believe already, as of current today's date, it's the biggest, it's the biggest soul-focused art photography marketing agency in the world. And that's not hyperbole. I've been asking on these calls, can someone name me an agency that specializes only in helping artists and photographers sell their work? I haven't found one. No one's ever put one in the chat for me, especially not a big one. Why? Because my aforementioned point, selling art and photography is not like selling swim fins or ladies' handbags or scooters. It's hard, right? It's really hard. Uh, and we're good at it because we've been working at it for a long time. Also, you know, I, I get upset, right? Because I look at all of you guys as like, you own a McDonald's, right? And if you owned a McDonald's, you have to know how to do the ordering. You have to know how to clean the floors. You have to know how to open the building. You have to know how to operate the drive through window. You have to be able to flip burgers and fries and do all of that and do the ordering, right? Like it's your business. You need to understand those things. But at the same time, I'm not naive in the sense that 80% of our customers still have full-time jobs or in some capacity. Maybe they're service-based photographers and they're trying to sell their fine art. So I get it. You need, you need to be able to have the ability if you don't have the time to do the marketing and you have the resources, you need a la carte things that you can jump off the shelf Hey guys, I need my Instagram profile tuned up. I need my Facebook page tuned up. I need to help with a sales campaign. You need to be able to do that sometimes. In addition to things like, we'll completely build your website for you. You don't wanna do that. You hate building websites. Uh, your fears in life in order are death, taxes, and building another website. I get that, I get that, right? So you can drop your images in a folder, tell us to build the site, we'll build the site for you, okay? We'll manage your Facebook ads, okay? We will manage all of your social posting, and again, it goes back to the top premise. Like our job is to create successful customers. And so we looked at it six months ago and it's like, we need to have an agency. And then some people are like, well, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I wanna do it myself. Fantastic. Our job is to have the best DIY product, do it yourself, learn, come on the sessions, and then also have an agency where you can pay. And again, it's a la carte or it's, you know, up, up to almost full service. And the, the amazing thing about it is, you know, I've been doing marketing a long time, right? What do all marketers love? A case study. Oh, we love a case study, right? With the sexy data about this huge win and we publish it on social media and we use it for lead generation. So totally did that all the time, okay? Guilty, guilty, you know? And if, if, if you lose, you don't publish it, right? You wait till you hit a winner and, and do all that. But it used to be, I would go and run a case study with a customer and you know I'd have limited bandwidth to do that and then we would build the playbooks. Well, guess what I have now? I've got agency staff. I've got one guy that all he does all day long is spruce up Instagram pages for artists and photographers. He's done, he did 65 of them last week or 65 last month. So imagine the learnings that we're getting. What happens is the learnings are going right back into the playbooks and then they're coming onto the Zoom sessions and they're teaching and we've got a little flywheel going on, right? We've got a little artist and photographer education flywheel. So it doesn't matter if you ever order a single solitary service from the agency, and we don't even care if the agency ever makes any money in all honesty, because all it does is just improves the product, makes more successful customers uh, and helps us grow. So we really, at the end of the day, are fundamentally a business that can be thought of as a rowboat, right? Um, it takes our oar, your oar, we jump in the boat in the same time. And if we can get that thing rowing in the same direction, the faster we can get that going, the better everybody does. So that's Art Storefronts in a nutshell. Uh, that's my presentation. Okay. Done with the pre-recorded video. The only thing that's changed or, or sort of updated, we're, we're in, a, in a stage of rapid growth as a company, which is it just pretty cool. Um, and it, it's only partially that what we're doing is awesome. It's also partially the fact that, you know, there's so many artists and photographers that had well-established and working uh, uh, offline, call it fairs and shows, call it galleries that were working for them and the pandemic has pretty much wiped all those out. So we've, we've seen some explosive growth. One of the things that we realize is that, you know, many of you guys went to art school or you went to college and there were classes about, you know, the history of art and all the masters and all the eras and all the ages. Uh, but there was very little about how do you actually build a sustainable business on your talent, right? How do you make enough money to be a full-time artist, right? Like marketing uh, art and photography in a digital age. Like there were none of those classes in college. You would have known because you would have taken them, right? We all would have. So, you know, the, the art business university concept is like a huge, huge deal. And so we teach all kinds of different classes ourselves internally, my marketing team, myself. Uh, but what we've really been doing recently as we've grown is starting to empower customers. 
and we've got like a diverse customer base, some of which are really, really good at various different things. And so, you know, in these last two weeks, we have one gal that has sold hundreds of thousands of dollars of art via licensing deals. She's very, very good at that. So she's coming on and giving a, a session or she came on and gave a session on how to license your art, how to think about how to think about that business pitch, how to how to look at the legal ramifications of it, um, what's involved in the negotiations. Uh, we've not, we've got another guy that is like the commercial art specialist. I think this guy's got his art in like 25 different banks spread throughout the Southwest of America. He's really, really good at closing those deals. And so he came on and he gave, he gave a pitch about how that all works. And then we opened it up to Q and A. We've got uh, one gal that specializes, I just had a call with her this morning in selling merchandise. She ran uh, a merchandise store for a huge brand uh, called American Pickers. And she's gonna teach a class on, on how, you, how you sell merch as an artist, um, you know, your image on all sorts of various different products. And we're adding more and more and more and more of those. And sort of our goal, our, our vision is, yeah, to have an art business university, yes, to actually offer a graduate degree uh, without any, uh, you know, formal paperwork, of course, uh, that teaches you how to grow a sustainable art business, right? Like there's just, there's, there's so little of that out there. And stated another way, we wanna be the Netflix for how you build an art business. Every single solitary aspect from top to bottom we are now curating experts. We're bringing them in to teach. Um, we are uh, uh, having them display their subject matter, material, expertise, and then you can ask them questions directly, right? And you know, every every all, every one of our, our our customers are all really really cool. Like everyone will, you know, help out, and and you can take it to the Facebook group and you can ask questions like, "Hey, I've got I've got interior designer on the line and wondering about what the contract should be. Give me your two cents, right?" So. We're, we're extremely pleased with that level um, of increase in education, uh, which, which, which I think will make a big difference over the long run. There's just, there's not enough information out there on how to actually take your talent and turn it into a really valuable business. And especially in like a digital age, a digital capacity where the normal offline revenue sources, which we were huge advocates of uh, prior to the pandemic, um, we just don't see them coming back anytime soon. Um, and when once they do start coming back, which we hoped is yesterday, they're not going to be coming back at 100%. So, you know, artists and photographers are sort of in an interesting spot in the sense that you have this next period of time until we get back to normalcy, where selling direct and gaining a grasp of digital marketing and how to get attention and eyeballs to your art is critically important. Like, I don't know what the alternatives are. There really aren't, right? Like, I had a, I had a, you know, every once in a while we get customers that are just really, really frustrated and they're pulling their hair out of their head. And I will sometimes get on the phone with them. And I spoke to a wonderful lady last week and she's in her sixties and learning the new computer stuff is really hard for her. She struggles, right? Her technical acumen is not super high. This is all brand new to her. And, you know, I felt the pain in her voice on the call. I felt the pain. Like I get it. My mom's not techie, right? She doesn't understand Facebook and Instagram and how to set up a website and how to do all these things and email market and run sales. And as much as I could feel the pain in her voice, I'm like, when you're going through hell, keep going because I don't know what the alternative is. How else are you going to sell your product in the, in the, in the, in the world that we're living in right now? So I think for this next little clip of time until we get completely back to normalcy until, until some of these offline revenue sources reemerge, um, we all need to focus and get better at our digital marketing. That's, 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 that's everyone's problem. I mean, I, I said it in that pitch, but I know conclusively because I have so many conversations with you guys week in, week out, every person on this Zoom call to a person, to a man, to a woman has a marketing problem. You don't have enough attention on your art, on your photography. You don't have enough people inquiring. You don't have enough people asking for a private art, a private art showing that, that that's what you need. Without that, how are you going to sell? So some of the things I like to rant on. Um, we'll open it up to the questions. I can see people are throwing them in, in the chat already. Wonderful. I'll answer all of those. Um, there is a way to raise your hand digitally in Zoom. There's like a little bar at the bottom and there's one that says participants. When you click on that, it gives you the ability to raise your hand digitally. And that lets me know you have a question. I can unmute your mic. Um, for those that are brave and have their cameras on, if you want to do the old school hand raise, I'll see that and I'll, and I'll tell you. Um, hey, okay, I saw your hand. Uh, I, I will get to your question. Um, but yeah, where are you in your business? What are you struggling with? Um, 
you know, what do you think the biggest problem is? Uh, are you struggling with niche selection or, or pricing or shipping or selling internationally? Um, we can, it can be just about anything. Um, I'd love to, love to literally get into all of it. So I'll start right into the chat. And Chris is saying, are there case studies you can share from artists that have successfully used your services, testimonials, or people that we can speak with? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll give you a hack, and I find it to be a fantastic hack. And you can use it for anything, not just art storefronts. But find a brand, okay? Go to their Facebook page and go to the reviews section. Now, if a company is shady or crappy, they have the reviews turned off because they're really hard to control. Anyone can leave one. But if the reviews are there, you get a list of a whole bunch of people that just leave review after review after review. And all you have to do is click their profile and click the message button and you can talk to them directly. It would sort of be like you could go onto Amazon when you're shopping for a product, read the reviews and send people messages. How awesome would that be? Someone hangs like a two star on something that you really wanna buy and you're like, hey, Steve, what the heck, man? I wanna buy this thing, what is the issues? And you'll get a very positive response rate. So we do have those, but yeah, we do have a bunch of different case studies um, if you look at any of our social media channels, they're all over the place everywhere. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different people you can speak with um, to, to, to see what we're like. Um, Ben's asking, can you please restate the sales level values, right? So we have three groups. Um, we split all of the customers up into these three groups. And I should say that we do that purposely because the problems are a little bit different depending on what group you're at. And the first group is if you've not sold up to $2,000 directly from your website. And we don't care if you're an artist that's come in, you sold hundreds of thousands of dollars of art in your career. You're in that group until you sold $2,000 directly from your website. The next level is between 2,000 and a much higher revenue threshold that we don't publish. So traction's the initial one, ramping is the second one, growth are for the really high growth um, folks uh, that, are, that are selling quite a bit already. And you can watch any of them after the fact. We just, you know, we wanna keep the question and answer focused on, you know, the problems that you're at in, in, in your particular journey and, and, and zero in on those things. Um, so that's what we do. Um, Allison's asking, what if we already have a website? Do you offer consultings on how to adjust it or make it more effective? Not really, no. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that though, Allison. You, you know, so much of what we teach, okay, so much of the marketing stuff, and I'm gonna unmute you, Allison, in case you have a follow-up question. You just hit the mic icon in the bottom left and that'll, that'll get you off. Um, if your website's working for you currently, then you can certainly keep it and you can just sign up and use all of the marketing information and put it into practice. But we find that most people, well, first of all, we don't dictate terms. You can do whatever you want, right? Free country, free software platform, so, you know, you know not free, free, but um, free to do whatever you want. So you could not use the software at all. You could, if your art is alisonthilo.com, you could do your art storefronts install at store.alisonthilo.com. Why, you, if you did sign up though, what we always find is that like people, especially is like, you know, I've spent five years and $10,000 getting this website up. It's awesome. I don't want to change anything. I just don't want to touch it. I totally get that, but it's obviously not working for you or you wouldn't be on this call. Right. So also like a whole heck of a lot of stuff that we don't even publish. I mean, when you request a demo, you see it because they take you through it. But the one example I always use is that we have a feature called Art Buyer AI. OK, we're, we're real snazzy with our names, by the way. AI. It's just a script that tracks people. The way to think of it is your art store, Allison, is an Apple store. OK. And this little piece of technology is like putting a camera in the upper corner of the Apple store. And I, Patrick, walk into Allison's store, which is the Apple store, and I look at the iPhone, I look at the iPad, I look at the MacBook Air, I buy the iPhone, and I leave. The camera detected that. And so instantaneously, in your back end of this website, it'll pop up an email for you that's already been written. And the email will say something like, hey, Patrick, thank you so much for your order of the iPhone. Uh, I really appreciate it. I can't wait to ship it to you. Uh, I did notice, though, that you also looked at the MacBook Air and also the iPad. And I just wanted to let you know, you probably weren't aware that we offer a special first time discount on three items or more. Um, so you could take an additional percentage off. So if that's something you wanna talk, talk about, I'd love to have a conversation with you. Um, here's how you can book a time with me. Uh, otherwise, thank you again so much for your order. And then you have the ability to edit that email text or you can just hit send. That's it, touch nothing, hit send. And there's like 
There's features all up and down the stack that are just like that, that will save you time and give you more time to spend on your marketing, which is the whole ball game. So that's, okay. yeah. Uh, my question then, uh, follow up, I guess would be, cause I've just started a website. So okay. I've just made all of those. Totally, totally understand. Totally understand. Shopping everything yeah. and I'm still building it. Totally. Understand. So that if that's the case, do, would you offer marketing help only, uh, like the playbook and yeah, you, you, you get access to, Oh yeah. 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 You, so you get I access to all of that. that. Yeah, you get access to absolutely all of that. What will end up happening, though, I can just tell you, if, if you do sign up, is you'll be like, day by day, you'll be like, okay, fine, I relent, I give up. I'm just going to move it over here because uh, it'll end up doing better. But, you know, er early on, we, we, we as a species, we as humans, think we have a website problem, right? Like, you know, you think you have a website problem. Mick thinks he has a website problem. Chris does. You guys don't have website problems. You have traffic problems, right? Like everyone thinks like, I need to change the store. And I'm like, tell you what, I'm the genie in the lamp, okay? I just popped out your first wish, I'm gonna grant it to you. I will take your website and move it to whatever website provider you want. I'll build the whole thing, you don't have to touch anything, I'll have it done in a weekend. Nothing's gonna change. All you're doing is taking an empty store and you're moving it from one part of town to the other part of town and it's still empty. Early on, the only thing that matters is getting people into the store, right? So. We have, we have a really, really good comprehensive training with all of that that would like walk you through all of that from start to finish. Yes, you would drive more traffic to your website. Uh, yes, it could still work, but yes, I think I still think you should move over. But you can do it, you can, you can do it like incrementally, right? Like, what is it on WordPress or is it something else? WordPress. Yeah, so you could, WordPress. yeah, what, what you could do is turn that original site just into a blog, use it for your blogging and then put everything else on store dot, which is another way to do it. But yes, I t still love WordPress. Totally understand where you're at. It's just, we offer a way better experience for it for selling art. So it's, yeah. Allison's like, do you have any idea how many hours I've spent working on this thing? <laughs> are you seriously, right yeah, are you seriously telling me I need to switch? <laughs> no, you don't need, you don't need to switch right away, but y yes, it, 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 it'll just be a big, It'll be a big difference, and 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 I promise you, like you know, a, a, a massive difference, not a not small difference. Um, but you don't have to you don't have to completely jettison it. You just you would jettison the commerce piece. But yeah, I I know it's the hard thing about hard things, Allison. It's the hard thing about hard things. Um, did that cover it? You have it? You have any more? Got it. Okay, great. Um, Kayla is asking, do you have a live working website that has all or most of what you offer so we can see it or a client of yours? Um, we can see something in action. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of them. All, all you need to do, Kayla, is just go to the reviews tab in Facebook and just click on the person's name that left a review, positive, negative, anything in between, and then they'll have their website listed in the, you know, in their bio and in their profile, and you can just kind of go down the, go down the line that way. Um, so Michelle's asking, do you help us identify our target audiences? Yes, of course. Uh, we teach you just about every aspect of, of marketing. Um, Michelle, I'm, I'm curious when you say your target audience, and I'm gonna unmute you, Michelle. You'll, it's the microphone icon, bottom left-hand corner. I'll let you know when you get it. Got it. So when you say you're trying to find your target audience, like let's start at the beginning. Have you, have you attempted to start selling your art yet? <laughs> yeah, I have. I've sold in, uh, sold in dribs and drabs over the years and various forms in person on various websites and not personally on my own website. I've sold through other sites. Yep. And so on the other site, so you don't get the customer info. And so you're like, I have no idea who's yeah. actually right. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, early on, you know, there's, there's, God, there's so many charlatans out there running around talking about targeting and finding your targeting audience. And, and it's just infuriates me because I've been doing this for a long time and it's nonsense. Early on, you start with the premise. And here's my art. I think it's awesome. I think people are going to want it. I've already sold some of it. So I know, I know people want it. And you start in on marketing. Okay. And we teach you how to do that. Right. And you market, you market, you market. And then once you have a little bit of sales data, you get a better idea on who your audience is. Right. And then eventually after you sold a decent amount, you can get into Facebook ads and then eventually start doing the targeting. But early on, you don't know for sure. You don't know what you don't know. You know your art is sold and you know that if you get it in front of the right eyeballs that, that you can make sales. And so you just, you have to start in on your marketing and it'll become more clear as you go down the line. But the funny thing about another one of these traps that most people fall into is you think in today's day and age that your art is the brand. 
And your art is the brand. But guess what? Michelle Shepard is too. Who you are, what you do, what you're into, your funny little dog, where you live, what kind of a life you live, your kids, all of it. Like all of that is just as much a powerful part of the brand, who the artist is, as is the art itself. And so both of those kind of just take their take their parallel track and we get you more attention, more attention, more attention. And then eventually your your target audience will become, you know, clearer, let's just say, or more clear. Okay. Good question though. Um Okay, Chris, what are you asking? You're on Wix, I, and I, I can see you, so I just unmuted you. You'll have to hit them. Yep, gotcha. So yeah, I'm, on Wix. I'm just curious how user-friendly it is to make changes, upload new images, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, pretty much everyone's e-commerce solution, you know, they're, they're all colas, right? One's Coke, one's Pepsi, one's Diet Coke, one's Dr. Pepper, right? Like, or colas, whatever, Rx. They're all so similar that the learning curve is not significant. If you figured out Wix, you'll figure out this one just just as easily. Um, you know, our where we sort of shine is, you know, we're not a website built to sell everything under the sun. We're a website built to sell art and photography, wall art, essentially, right? Now, don't get me wrong. We still do have some traditional e-commerce features that make us like the rest. But my point is, you upload one image instantaneously you're greeted with the screen what do you want to pick here i want to do metal i want to do canvas i want to do paper next screen what sizes do you want to offer we've looked at your image based on the image you provided here are the sizes that you could offer you go da, 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 and then boom all those product variations are built out it's done one second right like that is massively time saving from something you're going to do somewhere else not because we're awesome just because we're built to do this and nothing else right so you end up saving a, a, a tremendous amount of time there No, I, did you mute again? I can't tell. No, I'm good. Yeah. You answered my question. Thank okay, you. wonderful. Thank you, Chris. Okay, Ken, you've got your hand up. You are next. Go ahead, Ken. And you'll need to unmute. I'll let you know when you get it, Ken. Bottom left-hand corner of the Zoom bar. There's a Thanks. Goal. Yep, gotcha. Okay, I got it. I was talking to myself and I got lost. I do that all the time too, don't worry. Yeah, uh, but all the voices in the head, you know, they get, they get active. No, yeah. Uh, we've got a art business together where my wife is the brains and the talent. Okay. And what that business is at the moment, uh, we're getting a, it's a custom art uh, situation mm -hmm. and we're doing pencil sketches for high schools to put their athletes that have earned all state honors. Oh, wow. Great. In, a hall, in a hall of fame. Okay. And it's, it's going good, but it's it's limited right now to one school. Okay. And we'd like to kind of expand that. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily to schools, but maybe there's corporate opportunities, university, you know, things. And mm -hmm. we were kind of lost at how we should attack that. Yeah, I like that. That's that's an interesting niche. Um, you know, every niche has its ups and its downs and its, and its positives. How Just out of curiosity, um, how long on... A, a pencil sketch is it all by hand and how long does one individual one take it's all by hand and it's uh, an average one i would say takes five to six hours total but it's usually spread over interruptions like housework vacuuming life with the husband. that life thing yep um what do you charge for not enough not, not enough 130 130 yeah so we got to get that up yeah, I think I think that's a really interesting one. I think that there are a tremendous amount of opportunities there. Um, just selfishly, uh, your wife's probably not going to like to hear this. I would love for her to figure out how to do this with a digital pen mouse, just because she could probably cut that six hours down to like you know one or two or three hours. But that's neither here nor there. We've got a ton of people that do the hand sketches and just do incredible businesses. Um, some with pets, um, some others, but you know especially in like a digital marketing concept. A lot of people love using it for their content marketing. I'll give you an example. Like I have you, Ken, on as a guest on my podcast. I ask you ahead of time to send me a headshot. I have your wife do a quick version of the headshot and I pay you $100 per for one of those, right? That I can just use as my podcast graphic. So there's a lot of applications um, for that particular type of work. You're gonna just need to, to get in and start marketing it like, like anything else. But I generally do like the high school version um they usually have you know decent sized budgets too and can sign off pretty quickly it would just be about 
figuring figuring out the way through the gatekeepers what that what the best way to do that would be um and we we definitely have some ideas for you on that one thing that's come up in this just watching your uh, program here mm-hmm. is the fact uh, with digital we could spread that to actually sell the parents and grandparents oh all and day uncles, long you know all the, just kind of like school photographs all day long you know we have and, and, and let me just tell you this story because it's it's super interesting. Uh, we have this gal. Her name is Allison Cantrell. By the way, all the links that I mentioned during throughout this whole thing, we will put um, into a web page that we'll send you after the fact. So don't feel like you have to to, to write them down or whatever. Um, we have this gal, Allison Cantrell, and she calls her her site Bunny Pigs Art. And what her deal is is same kind of thing: pencil sketches of people's pets. Okay. And she has a really unique style that's really, really good. And uh, it's amazing. And I mean, I can't believe the volume of these things she sells. She opens them up in like batches where, you know, people can get in line and then opens it up in a batch and, you know, she'll do like 30 or 40 or $50,000 in, in one swoop. And some point like six months ago, nine months ago, she literally wanted to like move the business into merch, move to a different website provider and quit because she's like, I just can't keep up with this demand anymore. It's killing me, right? Like I can't keep doing all of these manually. It's just, I'm I'm going insane. And we convinced her to do digital, to figure out how to go digital. She still has some that she does by hand. She uh, got some overseas artists to help do portions of the work for her and then she finishes it off. And she's now churning out more of these things than she's ever churned out before. So there's there's so many different ways to work it when you have a when you have a good style and a good niche like that. So I think there's some 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 very interesting opportunities uh, for you guys on that. And and I do like you know if it's really good and it's athlete of the year and you know you have an easy ability to make prints and those artworks are extremely easy to scan and get up. You could you could really you could really do some interesting things with that. And you know you. You, you, you contemplate, you know, that is a service-based business, what you're doing there essentially to a certain extent, right? You're trading dollars for hours. You're, 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 these people are coming in, they're athletes, and you're essentially saying, I'm going to create a one-off work for you. I'll trade, I'll trade these hours that I have through the dollars. You're going to give it to me. Okay, fantastic. When you have the ability to monetize the print sales after the fact is when it really starts getting attractive, right? Because then for the same amount of time, instead of an order that's $130, you maybe have an order that's $560, right? So you're making significantly more AOV, average order value each time. And then also your beachhead is just getting into those families, right? And it starts with, hey, uh, let me just draw this one off. Wow, this is really cool. Wow, would you do our whole entire family? Wow, we're going to use this on a Christmas card. And so the opportunities would balloon there. But I would definitely, I think you guys would definitely be able to leverage quite significantly the print aspects of, of that, right? And especially, you know, you you get these high school award winners and there's the original prints. And then you have a table that you ask the school to set up that has a metal print, has an acrylic print, has a canvas print, has a paper print, and, and then just says available for offer, right? And you maybe you ask the school to send it out in like the mailer or whatever they do. There's, there's, there's a ton of different opportunities, I think, to you know, uh, uh, increase the AOV, the average order value in that business. Great, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure, Kim, thank you. Okay, Shirley is asking, how are custom orders handled? Um, pretty easily. I mean, what, what, what size custom orders are we talking about? I'm going to unmute you, Shirley. You'll have to get to the mic icon bottom left. Um, well, we do uh, uh, one-of-a-kind pieces on mm-hmm. wood and canvas and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, people have already started asking for custom work. Okay. Uh, so we wanted to know if that's an option yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it's a really, really easy option, right? Like, you know, I think early on, this is another one of these traps that we fall into, is how am I going to get a website to take care of all of this for me, right? And my question would be, like, it seems like the, the only thing that you really need to take there is the credit card. Like, I want to introduce as little friction in your custom order process as possible. So all I want to do is take the credit card and take payment, boom, done, right? Um, all the rest of it could be done in an email. Better still, all of it could be done in a phone call. And until you really start doing volume, I am all about like, you know, face to face and personal touch as much as possible. And 
yes, we can automate all of it. Yes, we can automate some of it. Yes, we can just handle the credit card piece. Um, all of that is really, really easy to do. Um, but if you're not doing a tremendous amount of volume, at the end of the day, all I'm doing is, hey, uh, Shirley, I'd, I'd really like to get a custom piece this size. You're gonna go, Patrick, fantastic, here's the link. <laughs> Give me the credit card information immediately and let's get the ball rolling on this baby, right? Like you don't need anything special. And I would even go as far to say, and this is how you know you can trust me, you don't need us to get started on this one. You got PayPal, you got Venmo, and you can accept check. Hey, Shirley, I, I need to get a 24 by 36. Uh, I really like that one you did for Susan. Will you do one of those? And you respond, check Venmo, PayPal, here's what it is, send the payment information immediately, right? Like when you get people asking, take the order. Get out of the way and take the order. Whatever the simplest way to take the order, take the order. Drive to their house and pick up the check to take the order. Um, send your significant other, who I heard laughing, send him to go pick up the check, right? If you're gonna, if you're gonna do the work. Um, so that's what I would say, but yes, we make it we make it very, very easy to do. Are people, are they one-off type of works or would people order prints of them in addition? Well, I'm not sure about prints. Uh, some of the canvas work could be prints. Mm -hmm. but some of this is done on wood, um, mm -hmm. so I don't know about that. Painted on wood or like wood burning? Painted, yeah. uh, some of it's carved actually. Cool, yeah. Yeah, so those are those are original originals, but yeah, it's it's very very easy. You just need the remove as much friction as possible to just take the payment, right? Take the right. payment. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. I get a couple of those a week, and, it, it, and, I, and I always usually get not necessarily like your custom situation, but like I get these people asking, and I'm like, take the money, take the order immediately. <laughs> always take the order immediately. Uh, that's like the most important thing. Uh, Sandeep, do you help with pricing of original art? Yeah, we absolutely help with pricing original art. Um, this is always like a, a massive topic of discussion. Sandeep, I'm going to unmute you too. Um, oh, awesome. The, so the, the trap that we fall into with pricing, uh, it, and, and it's on both sides, okay? And this is like a problem endemic to the art community. One is usually pricing too low, right? Two uh, uh, is, is being terrified of changing pricing ever and thinking the sky is gonna fall, the chicken little special, okay? You have to ask yourself in business, and, and we ask ourselves, it, it is a, an organization, art storefronts and everything that we do in our digital marketing and sales and everything else, is the decision I'm about to make a reversible decision or no? Meaning, very easily, if I decide to go a certain way, can I just reverse the decision and go right back to where I was? If the answer is yes, it's easy to reverse it, Make the decision, stop thinking about it, and go. So, uh, you know, for, in your case, let's say you're charging $1,000 for original right now, and you think you're underpriced. Raise them to $5,000. Start marketing for a month, see what happens. If it's crickets, we go back down. No one even had any idea you were at 5,000 bucks, right? None <laughs> at all. So we have, we, have, we have some set percentages. Yeah, I know you're laughing. Like, you're like, wait a minute, he's right. I could just reverse the decision at any point in time. No one would ever even say anything, right? So, Fair enough. yeah, I mean, early on, early on, and, and, and to what I would say, Sandy, was like, this is one of the things that makes art awesome. You can't really get comparison shopped, right? It's, a, it's, it, it's not like a commodity, right? Like, you know, the store next door to you has the exact same thing. Because it's a one-off, unique good. You can price it however you see fit. And sometimes, cheaper, yes, you'll move more volume at a higher price. Uh, there might be some people that would be attracted to it that weren't attracted to it before because buying high priced got goods is, is how they, you know, validate their lives. So, you know, there's there's everything in between. But I'm 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 reminded of this Picasso quote and I love this Picasso quote and I and, I, and I'll leave you with this unless you have any other questions is he 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 got interviewed by this like I don't even like it doesn't matter. It's a Picasso quote. He said early on my drawings did not command a high price but they always sold. He's like, your drawings have to get out into the world. And I think the larger port, part, port, the larger part with how do you price, if the work's not moving, you got a problem, right? You got a problem. And I would, I would consider lowering prices to see whether or not it would move. If it doesn't, I would consider going way higher. And then if none of those worked, I'd be like, okay, I've got a problem. It's, it's the work, right? Whatever I'm painting is not something the world wants. Does that mean you're a crappy artist? 
Absolutely not. It just means whatever style you're focused on for the time being is not something the market is banging down your door to get, right? So you pivot, you try some new things. So that's that's sort of how we we, we think about it and we approach it. Do you mind if I got uh, another quick no, question? No, not at all. If... That's what this is for. Please go. Yeah, so, um, so I'm, I'm working in some series mm -hmm. and the biggest ones that I'm working on right now are some huge 38 by 50 inches. Yeah, those are big guys. Um, watercolor um, portraits okay. um, that work with Basically, it's like a technique that just cracks and the watercolors just bleed into it. Cool. And that it, I'll send you a link later on if you want to take a look at I'd it. I'd love to take a look. Know, yeah, just, please do. Um, it's, it's just – it's it, it, they take a while, mm -hmm. Patrick. They take a while. And I read this formula about height by width times dollar amount. And that just – when I did the math, it's like, no way. This is selling for $800. It, like, it just gut instinct just drives me nuts to be mm -hmm. like, no, this should command a few thousand dollars at a minimum. So – that's something ultimately when I work with you guys, I want to talk to you guys about like how to, what's a starting price point with that. And the other things that I'm working on are like series of photography. Uh, when I was doing some traveling, that's limited. I've got the original negatives mm -hmm. that I'm thinking about, I think would go in. Um, but the watercolor large ones, I, that clientele for me is I think well to do folks yep. that live in, um, you know, I'm in New York, they live in New York or big cities mm -hmm. that I just think, and in hotels that's yep. for that. And the other ones, I think, have got a different marketing strategy. Um, that's something you guys can help with, I'm assuming, as well. Yep. Okay, yep. last question on this. How important for the Lathor, website? Lathor, Lathor, you asked the last question. Yep. yep. Um, you know that formula that helps you price things? I think that's interesting. Yes. I do. But there's only one formula, okay? And it's been true since the dawn of time, right? Since the dawn that somebody pounded out a gold coin. Does this come out and does it slide? That is the only formula that matters. <laughs> there is no other formula. All the rest of it are BS guidelines, right? So, yeah, you ha you have to you have to keep that in mind. And you know, again, it's it's we get you, you get caught up and you start doing the mental gymnastics on how to price. And I'm sure you spent some time on that, Sandeep. If I would have taken, if I would have been sitting next to you at the bar and you would have told me this question, and I'd be like, look, pull my mask down, drink my drink, Sandeep. Yeah. He here's the thing: start marketing it. You don't know what you don't know, and you never are going to know until you get that product to market. You start marketing, you get it in front of eyeballs, and you start seeing what happens. And early on, what happens is crickets, okay, works not good enough. We've got a problem. Early on, wow, that works really amazing. You get a nice little comment on Facebook, and then you write a comment back. Yeah, do you know what? You, you, make me an offer then, right? It would be amazing on your wall, right? Like you get those early signals of people that are really interested in it, and then you actually find out what, what your – product what price it can command right and you know you you just don't know until you don't know early on and and the other question you were asking which i love is how do i target high net worth buyers you were asking a variety of that right because in your mind yep. that's what you think is going to buy also nonsense okay complete nonsense you you just every single solitary business in the entire world wants to target high net worth individuals, okay? If aside from the 99 cent stores, they're out. But every other business, even they do, every business in the world wants to target high net worth individuals. If every business in the world wants to target high net worth individuals, it is going to be by definition, if everybody's doing something very, very difficult to do, right? So everyone right. gets hung up in their mind, I need to target high net worth individuals, complete nonsense. Everyone's followers, and I always do this on these things, so I'm gonna do it again. Everyone's followers, mine, yours, Chris's, Ken's, Jim's, they fall into a bell curve, okay? A standard bell curve. Down here on this part of the bell curve, uh, lower, uh, lower income people. They're gonna like, they're gonna share, they're gonna comment, never gonna buy anything, they don't have the money, that's okay. Lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class. My camera is reversed, so I'm doing this like backwards. Okay, the bell curve, that's it. What you do, everyone thinks that like, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna target those high net, I guess it's over here, these high net worth individuals, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spend all my time, energy, and effort targeting them. And I'm gonna go, no, you don't understand how things sell. That's not how it works, okay? You can try that, and I am gonna do what, what actually works. I am going to work on my marketing consistently across the board. And rather than worrying about this part of the curve, I am just gonna make sure there's more people in my curve, more people in my curve. And what ends up happening is, that is the most effective way to get in front of the high net worth individuals and buyers. Yes, the people that buy art for hotels and everything else. What ends up happening is even those, those lower middle class people, okay, that don't have money to buy your art, that are never going to buy your art, they know the people that are going to buy your art. 
and they have their ear, right? And they're gonna say, I saw this post from Sandeep, this guy's work is amazing, I've been following it, I can't afford it, but you gotta check this out. That's how it ends up happening in real life, not by targeting the high net worth individuals, so you don't have to do that. I recorded a long rant on this and I want you to listen to it, it's free, it's on YouTube, I'm gonna put it in the show notes. It is targeted, I mean, it is titled, How to Target High Net Worth Individuals. So it's there, it's ready to go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send it to you after the fact. But go ahead on your next question. Last one. Um, how important it is to um, sit down, I'm in the process of writing my mission statement and writing about the art, and because I went to your guys' site and saw some immediately, it's just visual. Um, mm -hmm. Is How much time does one need to spend about, you know, talking about what inspires them and all those kinds of things? You got one hour. What? Yeah. Just write it in an hour and be done. Yes. All right. All right, got my questions. That, that's that's the other problem too, Sandy, is that you think you need to have the whole diatribe done and right. the four you can get going on anything else, right? And what happens? The hours turn into days, turn into weeks. weeks well, as soon as months. I just finish this thing, I'll get going. And you know what? It's never gonna be perfect. It's not it's not it's not a be all end all, you're done. It's it's a version one of hundreds of versions, right? You need the homepage with your work, the titles, the prices, which we can adjust at any point in time. Don't worry about it. Then you need an about me that talks about you. Yes, you can put in there what you're inspired. You can do it in two paragraphs. You start marketing. You have a marketing problem. You need to get going until you start working on that. You will sell nothing. I have never heard anyone uh, come back and say, I did not buy that art because the about me section wasn't properly tuned up and I didn't understand the creative statement. Said no one ever. <laughs> Got it. Noted. Yeah. Awesome. And by the way, Thanks. when I'm taking yes. shots at you like that, don't think I didn't make every one of these damn mistakes for years. Okay. For years. I made every one of them, right? Like, you know, the analogy I love to give is your boat is sitting on the side in like a shipyard being built, right? And you're in there in the boat worried about what color the curtains are going to be right and whether or not the railings have a perfect coat of teak and whether or not uh the sail properly matches the other sail no push the boat in the water and see if it floats okay once it's floating then we can start working on those other things over time over time so just you got to get going you got to get going and that's not a sales pitch it doesn't matter if you get sign up with us you got to get going sandy you got to get going appreciate that i've been in touch with uh, brian who's awesome um we were into the demo so i will uh, be in touch with you guys thank you yeah thank you all right good questions though I'm not kidding. I made every single solitary one of those mistakes. Every single solitary one of them. And it's, they're just, they're easy traps to fall into, right? And you just, you waste time and time and time. And you're not getting started. You're not getting started. You're not, you're not taking any forward steps. And then, you know, where do you end up? Like exactly where you are now. You sold nothing. You've got no feedback, but you have an awesome artist statement. Or, you know, in my case, working on websites for hours, never doing anything. Like you got to get, got to get the product to market. Got to get the product to market. Um, all right. Ken's asking, what is the cost of the art storefront service? So here's how we do, here's how we do pricing. Um, a little bit of a rant on this and then I'll tell you the actual numbers. So we're like, um, we're like a website service, like any other website service. We charge a monthly fee for the website service. And that's what part one, right? The other part is, you know, the art business university in which we have the whole army of educators uh, that are working on playbooks that teach you via the Zoom sessions that support you on the weekends and you get that for the life. So you pay to get into the art business university, which is a one-time fee. Once you're in, you're in, you don't ever have to worry about it again. And so the fee to get into the art business university one time, the lowest plan is $1,000 and then the website is 39 or 49 a month, something like that along those lines. And again, the reason that we do that is the reason that we are different and the reason uh, that we charge as much as we do is we require you essentially, uh, effectively, to burn the boats, right? We're asking you to get in the boat, row it to the other side of the river, and then light the boat on fire. And we do that by charging you a decent enough clip such that you're gonna be this time, you're not gonna just go work on another website, get your work up on another website, never do any marketing, and then after a couple of years and lackluster results, you're gonna go move to another website. You don't have a website problem. We've got a marketing problem, and we need to have the infrastructure in place to make sure you're gonna be successful. So that's why we charge what we do. The minute, the, 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 the benefit to it, you know, uh, cynically, is, is that when you've made that level of commitment financially, you're not, you're, you're not gonna mess around. You come on board and you're like, okay, I just spent that much money. 
I am making this thing work. And so what we find that we get as a result of it is artists and photographers that are way more motivated to work consistently on their marketing, not for a month, not for three months, six months, for years, for years to actually build a successful business that'll do something for them. So that's how we do that. That's why we do that. Um, you know, it's it's like a one-time fee to get into the country club. I hate the country club analogy. I'm not a member of a country club, but you know, you get in and then you have all the amenities for life, right? Uh, which in this case is just nonstop marketing education, which will never stop. It can never stop. So that's how that works. Um, but when you request a demo, and by the way, we've, you know, our, our, our whole entire outreach team slash sales staff was in Austin, Texas. And so they all dealt with the snow apocalypse. I mean, we had, we had a couple of employees that literally had to leave their houses and go live in shelters for a couple of days. It was so intense. You know, almost all of them without power for like a week um, or, or like a week and a half. Uh, most of them without water. And so we had a sale going on for Valentine's Day that was supposed to be over. It is extended. Um, we have guys that are going to be working the phones all weekend long in the, the demo process. Why do we do the demo process? A lot of times people are like, Kai, what, just tell me what the prices are. Spell it all out. Why do I have to do a demo? The reason, um, the reason that we do the demo process is it takes like an hour on a screen share to go through all the features and the bells and whistles and everything else to actually truly understand and see what we do. So you request a demo, it's a 10 minute call, 10 to 15 minute call. You can ask them pointed questions about all the pricing, all of this, all of that. They'll find out about you, your business. If you like what you hear, then you schedule the real demo. If you don't, you say that was awesome or not awesome, not for me, have a great day. They will never call you or harass you again. We're not like a pushy organization. So it's, it's a great thing if you can do the demo, you understand it and then you decide, you know, for you, not for you, what, you know, whatever. Um, so that's, that's sort of how that, that process works. But yeah. Um, yeah, thank you, Robert, saying that we have a nice Facebook group for our members, we do. Um, <sighs> about this afternoon. Yeah, Lauren, I see, I see your message. Um, April, will you let, I'm telling you, that, that I, I apologize, these poor guys are buried. They literally, like, we basically just got nuked for a week. I mean, it was, it was devastating. Um, we, uh, so many angry emails have come in. I'm sorry. Uh, these guys are just literally a week behind. I will make sure Lauren that you were locked in to the deal, the deal pricing, and we will do our best to get Matt to call you back today. And again, huge apologies, but the, the snow apocalypse just, I mean, destroyed us. It, it, it destroyed us. Um, crazy times. It's like just one thing after another, these last couple of years, pandemic and elections and riots and da da da. It's like, can we just get back to some normalcy, please? would be really nice. Thank you. Um, Doug, okay, I, I can have you called, but you, you would have had to put in a demo. Doug, I don't know if you've done that yet or not. Um, okay, Ben said, do you do you say following 39 to 49 plus 1,000 feet to get into the university, right? Yeah, that's essentially it, Ben. It's just, it's a one time, I, I don't know all the ins and outs of the plans. Um, and, you know, things keep changing and sometimes prices are going up and down depending on what they're doing. So I don't even bother getting involved in it. That's why we do the demo process. I'm not gonna say anything that's gonna get me in any trouble or they've changed. It's just, you request a demo. I promise you, they, they will, if you're unhappy for whatever reason, they will, I know people are like, I don't wanna talk on the phone. They will never call you again if you're not stoked, uh, but they can, ex they, can, they can explain everything, um, you know, in detail. And yeah, Michelle, I see, I see you're saying that, just trust me, these poor guys, um, you know, it's not, it's not, not been easy, not been easy. I mean, I, I don't even, I live in Southern California, so it was hard for me because it was like 70 degrees out and sunny for most of the time, but I don't understand how you, you have a heater and your power goes off and you have no heat and you have a young child in the house and then your water goes off and like, you're just supposed to live by the fire. Like it's terrifying. Um, maybe I'm just soft, but I, I don't know. Terrifying. I mean, and, and then having to go into shelter, some of them. So crazy times. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we see all the chat. We'll make sure all of the guys will, will reach out to you. So April, just make sure Michelle's in there. Um, make sure Ken's in there, Doug's in there, uh, Lauren's in there. Um, you can just grab those from the chat, but guys, any, any other questions? Um, anyone with the hands up? You're all like, uh, no, mm, maybe. Ben, I don't know what your background is, brother, but that, that looks regal for Zoom calls. I mean, it looks totally regal. I, I, I want to unmute you just to talk about this background. I mean, is that just wainscoting going up the wall and wallpaper? How old is that house? No, this is a historic structure that my grandmother renovated about 30 years ago, and it's it's now in a family foundation. So, yes, it is Dude, a regal set. Awesome. I, I didn't know how it actually came across. But. Yeah, awesome. I mean, it looks amazing. Where's the house, <laughs> if, you, if you don't mind me asking? 
It's uh, well, this is I'm based in Salt Lake City, and uh, um, so yeah, it's one of the uh, the old stately structures from uh, over 100 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Well, it 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 comes through. It comes through. Um, okay. <laughs> I had to call that out. Don't see that often. Um, but you're good on your questions. Thank you. Yeah. Um, love Salt Lake City. Loved Utah. Love Park City. Just did Southern Utah too on a motorcycle trip, and that was freaking awesome. Um, I did that when I was a kid, Zion to Bryce, but I just did it again. It was amazing. God, Utah's an incredible state. Um, oh, I see, Donna, you just arrived. Donna, don't worry, we'll we'll send you the whole um, replay in like into your email like twenty or thirty minutes after this is over. Um, but yeah, wild times, wild wild times. You know, I'll, I'll say as a final, I mentioned I mentioned up front this NFT thing, and. I want to bring it up because it, it, it just sort of speaks to like the crazy world that we live in right now. So essentially there's the blockchain, right? Crypto, Bitcoin, all of that. And NFT is, it, it, I, I mean, I feel even weird saying these words, right? Non-fungible token. Okay. I'm going to put, I'm going to put um, this article, you know, I'll just pull it up and I'll talk about it because I, I want you guys to be loosely aware of it because you're going to read about it and some paper or magazine or something. And then you'd be like, you know what? The art store fronts guys broke this down for me. So, okay, here it is. And I'm going to be able to screen share and show you this. So just bear with me here. So this guy, okay. Uh, by the way, an overnight success, this guy did like a drawing a day for 17,000 years. Right. And he calls himself Beeple, and he's got this really weird digital art. Yes. It's a little political. Yes. It's like a little bit pushes the envelope, but he essentially used this process in which, and I'll, again, I'm going to put this in the chat so you guys can read it later. Um, he, he used this process of NFT, which they're digital assets, right? And the digital asset gets encoded into the blockchain such that if Jim bought this digital asset, Jim will always be the owner. He's got locked in, you know, legally upheld, this is my image, which is like whatever, you know, if you own the digital image. The reason it's exploding is because cryptocurrency has really, really gone up. And anyone that has made a tremendous amount of money wants to invest that money in other things that are important in the blockchain. Okay, enough with that part of the story. The second part of the story, which is really interesting, is there is a new social media application that's come out called Clubhouse. And how could I explain it? It's an audio only social network, okay? And maybe the easiest way to think about it is it's the best conference calling software you've ever seen in your entire life. That's not what it is, that's a way to think about it. And so I can host an audio room and we could all be in the audio room and I could bring people on. And it, and it, and it goes from like the best conference call, call software ever to sort of feels like an AM radio call-in show. Like sort of how I've been bringing you people up on the stage one at a time or you know, onto Zoom and you talk and we answer the questions and then go off. You can bring anybody up, right? So what's interesting about it is all of the people that generally stay away from social media for the most part, like the, the craziest of the crazy people are getting into Clubhouse now. Bill Gates just did something. Elon Musk just did something. In this particular call, the day after this guy sold people, sold the $3.5 million worth of art. Sorry, I forgot to put it into the, the chat here. Hold on. There was in one of these Clubhouse rooms, and so you can essentially just go onto the app and you can listen, right? In this room was... The president of Sotheby's, uh, the CMO of Artful, Elon Musk's wife, because she's an artist, the guy Beeple that sold the $3 million, a whole bunch of people that specialize in crypto, and then a whole bunch of other artists that are like at that like, you know, over a million dollars in sales mark, like incredible. And they're all just talking about it in the future of art. So it's, you're going to see more and more and more of it. It is actually completely ridiculous because it introduces like 10 times the amount of friction in the art buying process that you would have normally. But suffice to say, it's, it's, it's probably the biggest mover and shaker art related news headline that's happened in like 10 years and all of the, the major people are taken. So some food for thought. Um, I'll send you the links after the fact too. It's just, it's interesting to be aware of. And I do think you guys should check out Clubhouse. It's super interesting. Um, you, have to, you have to get invited into it, but you probably know someone post on Facebook like, hey, can I get a Clubhouse uh, uh, invite? But it's a, it's a great way to, 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 to learn from people. So, okay, final questions, are we good? Off, off to a Friday. Ben has got to go turn the fire on, pour a scotch, and start reading some classics. 
It really is a cool background. I, I love historic houses. Guys, thank you. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Um, like I said, you can request a demo. Don't worry. We will lock in the sales prices. We will chase down all of these guys to, to make these calls for you. I'm sorry that it's, it's, it's been a crazy time. And, you know, I'll put some other information to in the email that we send you after the fact. We have a really good podcast. It's totally free. The information is totally awesome. You can totally put it in place in your business right now. You don't have to sign up or be a customer or anything else. Really encourage that you listen to it. Um, the podcast is the easiest way to do it, but you could subscribe to the YouTube feed. April, let's put both of them on, on, on the landing page that we send after. And I'll, I'll, send you guys, um, I'll send you guys one of these after the fact. But thank you. Everybody have a wonderful weekend. Um, stay safe out there and, and hope to see you all again soon.